I never in a million years could have imagined ending my net sales 25.16% higher than I did the year prior. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Big Listen channel. I know this is a slightly different perspective than we're used to. We got the banner behind us, rather. Well, we always have the banner behind us, right? Uh, but right now, we're actually not uh, attached to the window. We're sitting down near the banner. All the stuffed animals are behind me. Maybe you see them. I'm not sure. I'm going to start by saying that this is not an exciting video, but it's an important video. I'm going to say that again so we all understand before we commit. This is not an exciting video, but it's a really important video. What we're gonna be doing here is talking about our 2021 year in review, and also talking about goals for 2022. We're gonna be here the whole time. Nothing's changing, so let's get started. We are gonna dig in on some stuff that I've alluded to uh, on the personal side of my life that heavily impacted my eBay business last year. Um, and I think it's important to explore those things and be a little more transparent. So maybe all of you can understand why I have the excitement I have about some of the things that I saw happen last year. And why maybe even though it's not where I hoped it would be at the end of the year, where it was at the start of the year, I'm still really proud of what we accomplished. And it's honestly more than I ever could have dreamed for with how last year was. So just give you a bit of a setup as to why last year was so difficult. Um, it actually starts right at the end of 2020. Around Christmas Day 2020, I had a lot of pain and discomfort going through my left hip, leg, my ankle, my foot, all the stuff like this whole left extremity. I have a history of a low back issue from like my mid-20s, uh, so like seven years ago or so. But... You know, nobody was like, oh, there's nothing really like blatantly wrong. So, you know, let's just make sure we're trying to calm it down, take some light anti-inflammatories, have some physical therapy, see if that helps. That's what really kicked off this whole thing. Because January sales were going really well, actually. And January 18th, I wake up, it's about 6-ish in the morning, 6.30 in the morning. And I am in extreme pain because I woke up. And I went to roll to my left side and I lifted my hips to move and I felt something tear in my back. And from there on out, it was extreme pain. Uh, after trying to get in for CTs and MRIs, turns out that I had a severely herniated disc in my lower back. It was heavily, heavily, heavily compressing my sciatic nerve. I was unable to walk without assistance from another person or being spotted in some way for a couple months. Uh, I actually didn't drive for three months. I wasn't able to have surgery until May 14th. Now, the reason I couldn't have surgery for so long was first and foremost, uh, I had to go through a series of steroid injections to see if that would help. Um, you know, there's just, you know, guys all know, there's certain steps you have to take, um, you know, based on, you know, your providers and all that good stuff, but... Um, beyond this, I actually have pre-existing conditions, respiratory and cardiac pre-existing conditions that, to be completely honest with you, freak a lot of doctors out to where the one I was originally working with wouldn't even entertain the idea of operating on me because uh, anesthesia could be detrimental. And this is a big deal. You know, it makes it really hard for a lot of surgeons to have confidence uh, working in a team with anesthesiologists. But long story short, I had surgery on May 14th. And then recovery has been a long road since I actually only stopped going to physical therapy because I fractured my rib a few weeks ago because I'm still having a lot of residual problems with nerve damage. Why is this so important? Well, because when I started last year, I had some ideas and goals in mind and then they all went out the window and the injury happened. But also when I ended last year, nine days ago, I never in a million years could have imagined ending my net sales 25.16% higher than I did the year prior. That's right, 25% up from 2020. Now keep in mind, I know 2020 was my first full year on eBay selling, but everything I was doing last year, I was so out of commission for so much of it. As an example, last year in February, February is my lowest month of sales and listings. The whole month of February, I did 20 listings 
and they were all listings that I pulled down and did sell similars just to keep the momentum going. There were no fresh items going up. On top of that, I had $201 in net sales. For the record, the only other month that I have had lower than this was the very first month I ever sold on eBay, where I sold $89. Then fast forward to the end of the year, my biggest month of the year was not December, it was actually November, where we did about $1,800 net. And the highest number of listings I had in a month was August, 174, which is a really big deal. So you can imagine, I was ecstatic to end the year at such a high point, considering everything that we went through. And I say we, because I talk about... I'm talking about my wife and I and our family and our son. Like, we, we were all in this. This was, it really rocked the boat. But to end the year on such a high point, it was incredible. It's still incredible. There's a couple other things that I want to note, though, with 2021. So, November of last year was my highest sales month of the whole year. Not December, November. And the interesting part is that this past November was 44% higher in sales than my largest month in 2020, which was actually December. Crazy, huge, huge increase. And then one other thing that I wanna note with this is that my average net sale price, my average net sale price, meaning each item I sold on average after cost of goods, taxes, fees, shipping, the whole shebang, was $17.70. It's not too bad considering the year prior it was $11.18. It's a big increase, way more than 25%. That means that I actually sold less items last year for higher value. That's a good thing. Less work, more reward. Not a bad deal. So let's look ahead to 2022 because we're in it now. January 9th, 2022, we're here. I could have never pictured being in the position I am right now. I'm very excited about this. I cannot believe that I have all my stuff in the basement except for my thermal printer. You know, I'm, I'm making YouTube videos. I have a TikTok account rolling. Even my GoPro that I use for these videos right here, I got this awesome upgraded microphone, a media mod, all sorts of crazy stuff going on. I'm learning how to edit videos. It's really exciting stuff and I love it, but I wanna talk about the goals and how all this relates to that. So we're breaking this down into three categories, eBay, YouTube, and TikTok. And I'm gonna talk about all three here because they all work together. First and foremost, eBay. I have five goals for eBay this year. All right, goal number one for eBay. This year, I want to do 2,400 listings. That's a lot. Last year, for perspective, I already said the highest month of listings I had was 174. So even if I replicated my best month last year, every single month I would not hit my goal this year. Comes out to about 200 listings a month, but I'm not looking at this on a monthly basis. I'm looking for 2,400 for the year. The year. So that's goal number one. Goal number two, I really want to eliminate my current death pile and only have a two to three week backlog of listings sitting around. Now I understand that that could be a little convoluted because of the fact that you want to build a stockpile or a death pile for the winter months. So more specifically what this means is I want to eliminate this now and start building for winter later where I eliminate it again. I want to stay on top of it until I'm really trying to stock up like midsummer, late summer, stockpile, stockpile. Goal number three, I really want to expand my shipping knowledge. Right now all I use is the United States Postal Service, USPS, because it's too convenient convenient for me to schedule a pickup for free and drop it right on my front porch and have the mail carrier grab it. I don't have to leave my house. I don't have to drive. I don't have to track miles that way. It's a whole thing. I love it. But there's a lot of other shipping methods out there and I know that I could be doing this a little bit cheaper on the shipping side and I want to investigate them to see if that's something I'm truly interested in. I'm not opposed to paying a couple extra dollars for something that gives me a lot of convenience. But if I could be doing something very similar and it requires this much more effort but saves me this much money, I want that. So we're going to expand our shipping knowledge this year. Goal number four, we're going to expand our sourcing. Right now, I primarily source from garage sales, a little bit from estate sales, and anything free family or friends want to give me. That's it. I would say that it's like 95% garage sales, 4% family and friends, and 1% estate sales. And frankly, that's not good enough. I really want to add in thrifting a lot because I know there's a lot of opportunity there I'm missing and I just have to prioritize the time for it. And then on top of that, I also want to figure out some flea markets and that sort of thing because I know that they have them in the area here in the Chicago suburbs. I just don't know much about them. Uh, maybe even some online auctions. Who knows? Goal number five. This is the one that I'm really not sure if I'll achieve because honestly, I don't even know where to start. 
I really want to release like a very clear, concise eBay guide or start a Discord. I know that sounds a little crazy, maybe. I know everybody's got something going, but I do have a lot of people who ask me like, hey, where can I find more of this information? I, I like what I'm seeing on your TikTok channel. I have a few people who tell me, because there's not many people viewing my videos here on YouTube, but some of the ones that are message me and all sorts of stuff. And I'm like, hey, is this something like you have more to this? Or I'm learning a lot from you. Can you give me some more? And so I think either a Discord or an eBay guide of some sort would be super beneficial. But honestly, I don't really know where to start. It is going to be a ton of work. And I have a lot of other priorities in line for building up my business because I do want to scale. So we'll see how number five turns out. But it's still on my mind. Let's move on to talking about... Right here, YouTube. I only have two goals for YouTube this year. That's it, two. Two goals. Goal number one, every seven day calendar week, meaning Sunday through Saturday, I will have one video come out, one. Starting now, one video every seven day calendar week. That's the goal and I plan to stick to it. I think it's gonna help me generate some visibility here on the website. It's gonna help maybe drive some sales, maybe a good conversation. I hope to learn something. I hope to teach some other people some stuff. It's all good things. The second part is with that increased visibility and like bettering my editing and all this stuff, I'm hoping to increase my subscriber count, which is now currently at 38 subscribers. Thank you so much to every single one of you, up to 500 by the end of the year. And that's a little bit out of my control because I can't decide who likes my stuff, but I do think that there's 500 people out there who could enjoy this, and I hope 500 of you all find me. And before we move on to talking about TikTok and my goals over there, I actually want to talk about how I started YouTube. I actually bought this GoPro that I'm recording on the night before my back surgery. You know, my younger brother talked to me uh, a number of times about how I should be recording what I'm doing down here. Um, I remember last year before my surgery, it was like a week before my surgery, I was over at his, his house and we were talking a little bit and I told him that I was thinking a little bit about what he was saying regarding videos and stuff like that and how I'm not sure how to edit and the time commitment and how that works. And he was just kind of like, hey, listen, you're already doing this and just try it. I wouldn't have this eBay channel if it weren't for my younger brother, Dominic, talking me into doing it. So, um... Thanks a lot, buddy. Uh, and you know, everybody else here can thank him for me deciding to do this. Because, um, yeah, if it weren't for him, I wouldn't have pulled the trigger. So, thanks, bud. All right, let's talk about the last one, TikTok. TikTok is a wild place, man. Like, the internet's kind of like the Wild West. TikTok is also the Wild West. I know I have a couple subscribers here from TikTok. So, thank you so much for jumping over from there over to here. It really means a lot. It, sincerely, it means a lot. I have three goals for TikTok. Number one, I want to post 21 videos a week on TikTok. Uh, right now, I'm posting somewhere between like 15 and 23. I want consistently a minimum of 21 videos a week. Breaks down to three a day. It might not seem like a lot if you're posting 15 second to three minute clips. But if you think about that, if say each one's a minute on average, that's a full YouTube video or more a week of content. And I would say once a day, I'm posting a three minute video. So it really adds up to a lot of content. Um, but what I like about TikTok versus YouTube, I can really just have a thought and throw it out there and it just, it's there and I don't have to word it a certain way and go through this editing process here and incorporate it into the video and all this other stuff. It's just like, I had this thought about eBay or about gross sales or about net or listing or whatever it is. And I go da 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 and send it out. And that's it. And people comment and give feedback. And it's incredible. I currently have 875 followers over on TikTok. I can't believe this. Um, but, you know, it's it's awesome. It's really cool. And it's a lot of visibility. And, you know, I know in, like, TikTok land and YouTube world, 875 followers is, like, nothing. I get this. But to me, it's, it's a big responsibility because I also understand that what I'm conveying and putting out there is heard by people who choose to hear it. So, um, you know, there's a weight with that. And I don't want to misinform. You know, I don't want to convey the wrong information. I don't want anyone to feel excluded. I want this to be an awesome learning experience, essentially, for everybody. Maybe a little bit of entertainment, too. This leads me to goal number two for TikTok. By the end of the year, I want 5,000 followers 
on TikTok. I know that that's a lot. I know it might be like, hey, Mike, you're already like 874. I just started this account like six months ago. But at the rate that I'm growing currently, I won't hit that by the end of the year. So I need to do better. It's just plain and simple. And I do think it's feasible, but almost a little bit unattainable. And I like that feature about this goal in particular. Goal number three. At the point that I hit 1,000 followers on TikTok, I can actually live stream. So like go live. And I want to do that like at least once a week doing shipping and just showing shipping. It's not about like, hey guys, what's up? And talk about myself and my life and all this. I just want to live stream my shipping. Be like, this is what I'm doing and sign off. I think it'd be a great opportunity for people to get like a little bit more of a step into what I'm doing in a very real live sense. Something I'm going to try out. So uh, we're... Only 125 people away, so jump on over there if you're not already on TikTok and follow me. We'll get there quicker. All right, everybody, listen, this is the end of the video. I know that, again, it was not necessarily exciting, but it's important. Not exciting, but important. I hope you hung in there with me. I hope you really enjoyed everything. You know, I, again, I don't plug this too often. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail with my feelings on this, but if you like what you're seeing, hit the like button. If you don't like what you're seeing, hit dislike. You know, I... I think they're both good feedback. I'm not going to get upset about it either way. Um, and if you're really feeling like you're getting something out of this and enjoying what you're liking, hit the subscribe button. It'll let you know when there's new videos coming out. Again, I'm going to have a new one out every seven-day calendar week. Till the next time, though, I hope we all get out there. I hope we all make some sales and start this year off in a way that's sort of how we want it to, even though I know sales are down for the vast majority out there. But good luck. Go get them. Thank you.